Convention Hotel, Arrival They came to Baltimore from all over, arriving by various means. Some of them flew, some of them took airplanes, and many arrived by train. A few took buses, chartered, if enough were clustered geographically, or Greyhound otherwise. A few arrived by car, and one arrived by boat, sailing into the inner harbor, and mooring at the docks just below Federal Hill. The first group gave the hotel staff pause. They'd known about the convention, of course, but they hadn't really been prepared for the first pony who bumped her muzzle on the revolving door. Paused long enough for it to hit her in the rump, and then darted forward and out, casting a wary glance backwards at the contraption. She looked around the lobby, taking in the little alcove with computers that anybody could use. The long open fireplace on the opposite wall currently not lit, in deference to the humid July day. One of the clerks motioned for her to come over, worried perhaps that she might set hoof on the escalator. It wasn't proper to think that she wouldn't expect the stairs to move, but it was clearly obvious that she hadn't expected the door to feed her into the hotel. A few other patrons, the clerk noticed, were also studying the pony, while not trying to be obvious about it. That was understandable, and if their staff meeting was any indication, soon they would have plenty of ponies to goggle. The mayor made her decision, and with a flick of her tail, she clacked over to the desk. When she'd arrived, she hooked her forehooves on the desk and pulled herself up, just enough that her head stuck over the top. Hi, I'm Bottlecap. I'm Kaya. She hesitated for a moment. Normally, her script would have had her asking if the pony, or if Bottlecap, had a reservation, but she probably did. Is your room reserved under Bottlecap? I hope so. Kaya's fingers danced on the keyboard, and found no reservation. Frowning, she tried again, this time just entering Cap in the field for the last name. Still, no result. Comma Bottle did provide a result, though. Pony, Bottle Cap. Gender tagged, preferred not to say. Already, she had an inkling of how the day might wind up going. Do you have any form of identification, miss? She wasn't entirely sure if Bottle Cap was all one name, or two, and didn't want to risk offending her guest. And a form of payment. Certainly. She ducked her head down and came back up with a passport, visa, and credit card all held between her lips. It only took a moment to enter the relevant information into the computer. The visa she noted had her name listed as Bottle Cap, while the passport simply said Bottle Cap. She passed the cards back. Do you have a floor preference? You're booked for the Harbor View, and we have rooms available on the 6th through the 14th floors. Um, might as well get a good view, I guess. Her ears turned for a moment, then focused back at Kaya. Uh, maybe not all the way at the top. That might be something a Pegasus would prefer. Um, how about 9? I like 9. Of course. I can put you in room 918. While she finished up with the reservation and the programming of the keys, Kaya briefly explained the amenities of the hotel. The exercise room, the rooftop bar and pool, the restaurant on the third floor, and the 24-hour convenience store on the second. Without even the slightest condescending tone, she also explained how the room key needed to be used to move the elevators to guest floors. A pony might not know. Do you have any luggage? I can have a porter bring it up if you want. Oh, it's just my saddlebags. She said. That's all I need. It... it says here that your room is reserved for two. Is the other guest here? Unlikely, there weren't any other ponies in the lobby yet. No, she had to take a late train. Bottlecap glanced over the elevator bank. So, if they don't work without a card, how is she gonna get in? I can put a note in the computer, and when she arrives, I can call your room or have a porter escort her up. Whichever you prefer. Or, if she wants, since you're already checked in, she can just call you and you can come down and meet her in the lobby. That's what a lot of people do at conventions. Can you make a key for her and set it aside so when she comes, she can just let herself in the room? I might be napping. Of course. A few more key clicks. The key wouldn't be created until she actually arrived, of course. Let me make sure. The reservation says Melba- yeah, Peach Melba. Whoever had been entering in pony names hadn't understood which field's first and last name should go in, Kaya noted. That was something to mention to the rest of the staff. Besides the hassle of looking up reservations, ponies might be insulted by people getting their name wrong. It's all taken care of, Bottle Cap. Enjoy your stay at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. If there's anything we can do to make your stay more enjoyable, please let us know. Thanks! She turned and made her way to the bank of elevators. There was already a car parked at the ground floor, and from her post, Kaya could see her enter. 
and after a moment, the elevator began its ascent. Meanwhile, the revolving door disgorged another pony, this one a unicorn. They came from all over, arriving by various means. Some of them flew, some of them took airplanes, and many arrived by train. A few took buses, chartered, if enough were clustered geographically, or Greyhound otherwise. Some of them had bags and bags of luggage, others only had saddlebags on their backs. Some struggled with the revolving doors, although the porters and valets out in front quickly realized and directed them through the doors beside the revolving door. Most of them passed through the lobby the normal way, the exception being the flyers. Kaya saw him when he glided down the escalator. He was a light yellow with a spiked gray mane, and she was certain that if he had checked in, she would have noticed him. The fact that he came up to her desk and asked for a key was a good indication that he hadn't, and she wondered if he had come in the back way. That was where the buses stopped, and maybe he'd gotten on the elevator and ridden up a couple of floors before realizing that really wouldn't get him where he needed to go. It didn't occur to her until much later that many of the Pegasi were landing on the top of the parking garage and making their way down from there, nor did she realize until much later that they weren't riding the elevator down from the sixth floor, they were jumping off the balcony over the 300 Club and gliding down from there. Admittedly, it was the most direct route to the lobby. As the afternoon went on, the reception area overcame its initial struggles. The three desk clerks on staff used their downtime to check through all the various reservations and made notes on what possible variant of the pony's name might have been entered. Everyone gotten over the shock of seeing unicorns levitating things, and the entire staff had been treated to a pony family, complete with two adorable foals and an only slightly less adorable teenage daughter. They didn't know for a fact that she was a teen, but the way that she rolled her eyes when her younger brother and sister excitedly rode the escalator up and then back down again implied it. Things had almost fallen into a routine, then a zebra arrived with an entourage and a regal bearing. Said entourage had a suite, and technically there were more ponies than the room was supposed to have. Ponies were small, and more of them could fit in a suite. She found one that was next to an unoccupied room, just in case, and put a note in the computer to not sell it right away. Just in case they decided the suite wasn't big enough to fit them all. As soon as they tromped off to an elevator and crammed themselves inside the cab, she turned to Meriro and whispered, Do you think she's royalty, rich, or some kind of celebrity? Well, she didn't have enough stuff to be rich, Meriro said. I heard ponies had princesses and queens and stuff, so I bet she's royal. Plus, she had one of her entourage do the transaction for her. That's how you know. A rich person wants to be seen tossing around the wealth. Royalty just can't be bothered. Every time they thought they'd seen it all, a new guest arrived. A pair of bird lions soared down majestically from the sixth floor, and after they'd checked in, Marrero and Kaya debated what they were. It was incredibly rude to ask a guest what their race was, and both of them assumed that that extended to species. Marrero thought that they were griffins, while Kaya vaguely remembered her boyfriend mentioning a sheardle, which kind of fit their description. It was something to ask him about tonight. There were ponies with cloven hooves, jagged horns, and leonine manes and tails. There were bipedal lizards, bird horse hybrids, a hippogriffs which they both knew from Harry Potter, and even a strange bipedal cat who reminded Meriro of Fonzie. Kaya had no idea who Fonzie was, though. By the end of their shifts, they had concluded that there was simply no logic to equestrian names. Some of the guests only had a single name, some had two, likely first and last, but that couldn't be assumed. And a few had more, such as Junkie La Reder, Van de Narcissen. The usual routine for guests was to check in, wash the dust off in their rooms, and then leave their rooms again and do things. Said things varied from group to group, and individual to individual. None of them quite knew what to expect from the equestrians. Would they be demanding guests? Entitled guests? Would they come down to the lobby and mingle, or would they prefer to stay up in their rooms? Were they partiers or not? Complainers? Kaya could read most of her guests by the time the check-in was complete, but she had little luck with the ponies. Most of them were friendly and patient, which was a good sign. Some of them needed specific instructions on how the keycards worked and how the elevators worked, which was not as good a sign. And any number of them came into the lobby from the most convenient entry point, which was also worrisome. The sixth floor patio's door wasn't locked from the outside because why would it be? A large number of winged guests arrived via the patio, which was a valid reason to rethink security on that door. Ponies had come back down from their rooms, mostly grouping on the second floor, but a few clusters had established themselves on the first. 
one group was trying to figure out the computer, which luckily for her was outside her area of responsibility. A lizard was rummaging through the plastic jewels that surrounded the potted plants, but not causing any harm. And every now and then, a pony entering the hotel would get caught in the revolving door, despite the best efforts of the valets and porters. There was no rule that said that she had to leave the hotel premises at the end of her shift. Usually she did. It was the un-American thing to do to hang out at one's workplace when the shift was over. But ponies had also discovered the bar, and some of them were taking advantage of it. And she was genuinely curious to learn more about the hotel guests, so she took off her name tag and joined them. Just imagine if you were working at that hotel, and you saw all that. You'd either be exceptionally happy, very confused, or any other feeling that you might feel. But either way, that is one hell of an odd thing to see. Something that isn't odd, though, are our fantastic donators. Top donators, Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, and Darkseid. Dospo, RuneScythe9852, Courier Crucii, Delta Omega, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Soul Dragon, Cerberus, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David D. Sanchez, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F., Rainbow Dash, Teal K. Anderson, TV Killer, and John Becker. Thank y'all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest. I don't know why the hell I did that. Bruh.